So we're going to do another one here. So I'm going to get a little bit of rosin out of my my uh, solder flux here. Running low on it. Gotta get some more. And so I'm going to drop my cleaned wire down in the hole, heat up the wire until it drops through. You want to make sure that these things aren't sticking out too far on the back side or else they'll touch down on the framework of the metal, the casing when you put it back on. You may not be able to see that that solder stuck good, but it did. It's got that burnt rosin on top of it. Then I take my trusty little pliers and I cut the nib off. I did notice a missing component on this board. I'm going to have to track down that little resistor that goes right here. That's missing. I did have to replace this resistor. It was blown. And so, this is actually about one of the worst boards that I've done. And if I can get the worst board that I've done working, that's good. So, we're just going to keep on doing this and going through and getting all these ones that I cleaned. And I did see another one that I do need to clean. And get done and uh, then once we're done we'll clean the board off and we'll finalize it with a layer of our uh, rosin flux that's for reballing solder reballing is like doing microchips on an iPhone that's what this stuff's for and that's what this stuff's for but it works real good for this other stuff it's a real um, delicate on the components so we've got a couple more here hidden that I've cleaned And try not to melt anything you don't have to melt. Damage anything you don't have to damage. And expect to have to put some jumper wires. So there's one circuit here that I'm not trusting. I'm going to put a jumper wire on. And it might be a good idea to do it anyways. On some of them. You know, ones that turned out real good and you're satisfied with them. That's fine. Other ones that you may not be satisfied with, you might want to put the jumper wire on there. And be careful when you're scratching the surface of these contacts with the solder iron next to it. If whatever you're scratching it with uh, makes contact with it and seats uh, solders down and then the soldering iron comes away from it it may pull the lead off the board you don't want that sorry for a boring video here guys that's just kind of the process of how these videos go you know if you're sitting there and you got one of these computers that are bad it means you're not running your vehicle and you're in dire need of getting this done so it might be worth it for you and if you do it and it doesn't work just keep on doing it because you missed one or two or something you missed a connection so you want to just keep on going at it until you get all your connections done this one had quite a bit of corrosion on this board and so it's definitely going to need a moisture barrier put back on it. Point where we're going to add some flux to this. 
with the heat gun here. So first we're going to take some of our flux. And we're going to use this as a cleaning agent actually at this point. To help get the balling solder off of it. And this heat gun will overheat the board. And make the board bubble and pop and do damage if you hold in one spot too long. So if you watch iPhone repair videos, you're going to see them using the same stuff. That's why I got it. Fixing iPhone. Sometimes worth it, other most times waste time. You gotta watch out because this heat gun is designed for soldering. It does get hot enough to melt the solder. In some spots, it's a good thing. So we're just trying to move it around the board. And this is the same thing we're going to do at the end of this. Once we clean off all the rosin and burnt rosin and stuff. And all the corrosion off the board and get all our connections done. But we're just doing this at this point so we can clean it off and make sure we've gotten all our connections done. So what I'm going to do is use that Carquest uh, red labeled brake cleaner, non-flammable, to clean this off. And I have used uh, starting fluid and stuff and people complain about using some of this stuff um, and it will take the moisture barrier off don't confuse the moisture barrier without with it being the actual circuit board um, definitely don't want to dissolve the circuit board but the red label brake cleaner will work and I'll be back okay we just got this cleaned and we're gonna look at some of our connections and make sure everything looks good here and we Probably, you know, just like everything, you know, you miss something. You have to keep on going around and looking at it. So the connections that we have done here, we have done that one, 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 this one, back here. Which I still got some solder paste back there. See if you can see that. Um, that one, we got our missing component sitting right here. And uh, so we got that one. This, we got that one, that one, that one. We got one back in here. We got this one right there. We got a little bit of solder mess here to clean up. No big deal. Just make sure you get it. We got these two right here. And I think we have one more that I've seen in here that, yep, right here that I have to take care of. Oh no, that's not one. Um, yeah, there's one more in here. So I'm going to go through, skip the rest of this until I'm done and uh, give you the last stage of this. So we had to put it in a jumper wire right here. And uh, so now we're to the stage of putting in our capacitors. We've gotten everything done. I still have to track down that one component that goes over here in this little corner right here. Um, but I'll track that down. More likely I'll find it out of an iPhone or some other type of computer or something. I'll just snag it off the board. And so I'm going to replace my capacitors. This one goes here. We got a negative symbol on this side. That goes that way towards the heat sink on both of these. And so this one just has a little black line right there, which is the negative. Also goes towards the heat sink. And if you look on the board right here, if you forget, there's actually a little plus symbol right here. So the, that would be in the same right here. And so we're going to put the capacitors in. So now we're just going to put a, our layer 
I'm just going to squeeze a whole bunch of that stuff all over. I still got to put in that one component, but I'm not too concerned about that. We're going to use the heat gun, and then we're going to tip it side to side to kind of move it all over the place. This stuff does not conduct electricity, so you don't have to worry about it being on here. And it'll keep the oxygen from getting to the oxidized components. Once acid etches a metal, it is extremely hard to stop that metal from re-oxidizing. And so you're going to have to put some kind of barrier on it. And this will work good because it has very light cleaning agents in it as well. And, but not strong enough to uh, cause any damage. Gonna get this stuff all over the place, especially in any area that might have had corrosion. This thing had corrosion through this whole lower section here. The most corrosion I've seen on one of these things. So I expect to maybe have to do more work to this. But, in the last few days, I fixed five of these things. All worked just fine. Biggest thing is making sure they don't corrode again once you fix them. If they corrode again, you're going to have problems again. And so, here we have it. We have a rebuilt Mazda B2600 ECU with the Rubicon capacitor issue. And so I will, once I get the component in, probably won't video that, but we'll uh, plug it in and we'll run it. And I'll have